Hello, neighbors, and welcome back to the neighborhood. Good Wednesday to you, wherever you might be in God's beautiful world. Welcome to you. Today is the first day of of confirmation. We're excited to, to begin another, another uh, time of uh, learning and education with our sixth grade, our seventh grade, our eighth grade, and our ninth graders. We have uh, plans in place. We have uh, put good order to our time together, and we're excited for that. You may uh, notice uh, uh, the staff, our teachers got shirts. Peace be with you and also with you we extend god's peace to you and to so many right now god's peace more than ever needs to reign so we welcome you thanks for spending part of your wednesday with us in our wednesday devotion it's it's good to be with you and we begin as we always do in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen in a world filled with hearts frozen with loneliness and fear, the fire of God beckons with the promise of warmth and comfort. In a world paralyzed with hate and injustice, the fire of God dances with joy and love. Come, join the dance of life. Come, open yourself to the fire that never dies, that never fails, that supports life now and forever. Amen. So be it. Come to us now and always, God. God, our Savior, God, our Advocate, and God, our Giver of life. Amen. The Word of the Lord brought all things into being, the Word and all living creatures. We are of it and in it, and we are the image of God, caretakers of this creation. For into our hands has God placed the responsibility. May God lead us, empower us, and give us wisdom. For into our hearts has God placed the empowerment and wisdom. For into our minds has God placed the capacity to lead, empower, and give us wisdom. Let us pray. Before the foundations of the world, Christ has forgiven us and forgives us still today. Let us forgive as we have been forgiven. Let us remember to welcome, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to love God most of all. As we come to you this day, O oh God, remind us that you are, you are never changed. You are forever who you are. You are the same yesterday, today, and always. Amen. My devotion for today surrounds that phrase and actually it's a verse from hebrews hebrews 13 verse 8 jesus christ is the same yesterday and today and forever jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever and as i think about that i want to i also want to read the first verse of the bible in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want to bookend that. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want to follow it up with the last verse of the Bible. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all Amen, or it is so. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the beginning, God created everything, and the, and the grace of Jesus Christ be with us all. It is so. And there we have it. The book ends, the foundations, the beginning and the end. But Jesus Christ never changes. And you and I are in the middle somewhere. Walking alongside one another. Walking alongside a God who never changes, who is always with us, who gives us words that are helpful, encouraging, and right. So my devotion today is actually 
tried to do a lot of reading, and it's, a, it's an article that I came across when it talks about it talks about us keeping our wits about us. There's a quote that says, The faith of Christians should make people who do not believe doubt their unbelief. Do we do that very well? Do people of faith and their love of, of neighbor and of God, their passion for their communities and others, their love for what God has put among them and within them, are the encouragement. Does our belief make those people who do not believe question their unbelief? I don't know. But so anyways, the devotion is an article I came across and it talks about that. It talks about uh, the people who walk as yet of faith and how we react and how we respond and how we portray our life of faith. <clears throat> and so it says, Christians could provide an alternative to anger and outrage. But public discourse has to be different than our private emotions. However, social media has moved us all into public discourse and the world is watching. The world is watching the church and people of faith. Our friends are watching and listening and so are unchurched people. They are watching and listening. And does our faith and belief make them question their unbelief? And so here's what's at stake. When Christians lose their ability to manage themselves, people lose their faith. We, Christians, should be looking for solutions. The church right now, the body of Christ, is reaching out to more people than it ever has. We, the body of Christ, is extending the invitation to be with us in so many ways, and it is right there. And so we continue to think about that. God transcends all of our divisions, all of our politics, all of our emotions. God transcends all of that. The world can only be changed by the gospel message. The gospel message cannot be reduced to a political platform. The church exists solely to glorify Christ and to go grow his kingdom in this world. Those of us who walk as yet by faith, the body of Christ, we point other people to Jesus Christ. And so when we think about that, we think about pointing people to Jesus Christ. We think about the fact that the truth, and Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life, never changes. It is timeless. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, what do we do? Not everything elicits a response. A lot of things today are wrapped up in emotions. But not everything needs a response. We pray about it. We sleep on it. We don't respond. We just don't. Christians are asked to pray more than they are to talk. And now all of a sudden, when we do that, the body of Christ is different because when we pray, we seek God's wisdom and counsel and God gives us direction. God opens up our hearts and our minds and our abilities to see what it is that our communities really need. Our communities seek people who are resilient and forgiving 
and graceful. Our communities seek people who are willing to be led by God's wisdom, not by human outburst or emotions or words that are divisive or toxic or poisonous. So what else do we do? We confess. We confess our shortcomings. And first and foremost, we always say that, Jesus Christ, I have sinned and I have fallen short, but I know that you forgive me and I know that there is love and grace that abounds and you ask me to be forgiving and graceful to others. So we start confessing, we stop shaming, and we stop blaming. The New Testament talks about confessing our sins. And we do not blame others for their sins, but we confess. We take responsibility. Jesus has asked us to confess our sins. And so we do. We confess them. And in confessing our sins, it creates a humility and an awareness of where we have fallen away in our relationships and fallen away in our relationship with God because sin is a death. Sin is the death of a relationship and in God's forgiveness, restoration is brought to those relationships. And we look to foster relationships, real life relationships, not, not artificial ones, not ones that cannot be met with face-to-face -face reconciliation, forgiveness, grace, and acknowledgement. But we foster real life relationships where we become more thoughtful, understanding, and empathetic to better understand how other real people are living their lives and how they're doing and how their resilience is doing. How we bounce back. How we listen to other people, how we stop judging, and how we stop bullying, and how we stop our selfless, our selfish acts, and look at the selflessness of Christ Jesus. And lastly, we think five years from now, what will I have wished I had done different? How would we wish that we will have behaved differently, acted differently, forgiven differently, and also have been forgiven differently? Because just as we are asked to forgive, sometimes we need to ask to be forgiven. And that's part of the confession. And that's part of the humility, and that's also wholeheartedly part of God's love. So, does our belief make those who do not believe in Jesus Christ question their unbelief? Our answer should be a resounding yes. People should look at you and I and our love for Jesus Christ, our love of neighbor and our love of God, and make those who do not believe say, wow, what is it? What is it that I'm missing that by encountering a relationship with Jesus Christ, my life will be different and I'll live differently and I'll love differently and I will enter into relationships differently. So may that be our thought for the day. Is does my faith make those who do not have faith question their unbelief? Thanks for listening. Amen. Let us pray. God, your creative and loving power has brought us into being, fitting us for a life which is complete only through you. Grant us the joy of your creation, the knowledge of your will, the inspiration to understand, and the courage to lead our, to lead our lives in a way that makes those who do not believe question their unbelief. Inspire us to prophecy, create forms, of, create forms of opportunities so that all who come seeking you 
might be touched and challenged and filled with the Holy Spirit. Take and use our thoughts, our words, and our deeds to further your kingdom of heaven on earth. We ask this in the name of the one who brings us into relationships with you, God, with your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, who calls, gathers, and enlightens us now and always. Amen. And we pray together the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As always, thank you. Thank you for spending part of your time with us. Thank you for your prayers, your encouraging words, your support in so many ways. We are thankful. We are humbled. We are encouraged by so much. And we hope that our time uh, through these uh, opportunities, our in-person worship, either uh, in the parking lot or if you're able to set outdoors, soon we'll be coming back in-person worship. Uh, there'll be more information that'll be coming out, but uh, starting in October, we'll be, we'll be coming back to in-person worship. Watch for details to come. There'll be, there'll be some things that we're going to ask of you but to, to be healthy and safe. But in-person, back here in the sanctuary is coming. We are excited. And uh, we're thankful. We're thankful that you have been so good to us wherever you might be uh, watching. So thank you. Uh, until then, uh, outdoor worship continues. And even beyond, when we start coming back in-person worship, there will still be an outdoor worship uh, opportunity for those who want it. Online worship will still be available for those who like that option. So we'll have, we'll have an option for everyone's uh, desire in person, uh, outdoor, and online. We're thankful for all of you. Uh, be sure to tell someone that Jesus loves them. Invite someone to worship with you at the big church on the corner. And as always, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>